With OpenArt's chat to edit, you can edit an image just by describing the change you want in plain language, like make the house orange or make it rain. Shoo, when I typed in make it rain, I didn't know whether it was going to change the weather or put some exotic dancers on the front lawn. Or maybe add something to the image, like put a dog in the front yard. By the way, I'm Bob, and this video is sponsored by OpenArt. You'll find a link to OpenArt in the video description. When you're using chat to edit you have four different models to choose from, Gemini, GPT Basic, Medium, and High. GPT Medium is the default. The difference between these models, one is the credit cost. Gemini is only one credit, GPT Basic is 15, Medium is 30 credits, and GPT High is 100 credits. Speed is another difference. GPT Medium is taking uh, roughly 30 to 40 seconds per response for me. GPT Basic and Gemini Gemini are both faster, and GPT High takes a lot longer. For comparison, here's an image of a cartoon cat I started with, and I said, make the cat's fur bright purple. Gemini made most of his fur purple, but left some white spots. All of the GPT models made all the cat's fur purple, but Gemini kept the rest of the characteristics of the cat and the rest of the scene similar to my original. All the GPT models wanted to make some changes, either in the background, or the cat's eyes, or his ears, and GPT Medium also changed the aspect ratio of the image. For this guy, I said, put him in a modern office. And all three of the GPT models produced what I had in mind. Gemini, not so much what I was looking for in a modern office. Gemini also thought it needed to change his jacket from whatever color green this is to gray. You can really see the difference in the level of detail among these models, starting with the GPT basic, it's kind of fuzzy. GPT medium gets a little bit clearer, and then there's a lot of detail there in the GPT high. I think the Gemini falls probably somewhere between GPT Basic and GPT Medium. I chatted some edits to this image of a classic truck here on the street using GPT Medium and Gemini, starting with Make It Sunset. GPT Medium changed the aspect ratio, made some minor changes to the truck as well. Gemini seemed to go with kind of a GTA style or something. Then I said Make It Winter, again GPT changed the aspect ratio making it a square image, it also faded the truck quite a bit. Gemini did better at making it winter without changing everything else. Next I said put a crate in the bed of the truck, again GPT GPT fiddled with more details in the image that weren't related to the change that I asked for than what Gemini did. Next I said put the truck in an industrial area in a large city. Two very different interpretations and that's fine, but I think Gemini just stayed truer to what the truck looked like. Next I said remove the truck from the scene, let's see what's behind that truck. Then I tried replace the truck with a 1980 station wagon. The last thing I did with this scene was using image reference I added the image of this guy and said make the man stand next to the truck. GPT sort of condensed the truck or something and the proportions of the man to the truck just don't look right at all. Gemini did better in that regard but the guy's face is a little fuzzy and he kind of looks pasted in there. So I also tried GPT high with this one and I guess it thought the guy should be standing in front of the truck not next to it like I asked for. Now I didn't retry these again. If I had, it might have been a different result on the second roll, or maybe if I had added some more details into my description of what I wanted changed, I might have gotten different results. To use chat to edit, go to OpenArt, there's a link in the description. Create an account if you don't have one already. Once you're logged in, right down in the center of the screen is chat to edit, click that. Or over on the left menu, if you click edit image, when the editor opens up, chat is over on the left hand side, and you can also get to it from the create image page over there on the left you'll see the chat button. Whichever way you get here, this is what the chat to edit section looks like. We need to bring in an image to work with. You can either upload it from your computer or select from your history here on OpenArt of things that you've generated, upscaled, or otherwise edited. We'll pick this guy right here and say confirm. We've got an image to work with. Now over on the top left is where you select the model. GPT medium is the default, but you can switch it to Gemini, GPT high, or GPT basic. Below the quick instructions here is the character lab. We're going to skip over that for the moment. We'll come back to it. Down at the bottom where it says, tell me your edit request. And this is plain language. So just describe it the way you would if you were telling another person what you wanted changed about this image. We could say something like, make it a snowy winter day. Then either hit enter or click on this send message button. And here we are with a snowy winter day. Now notice that what's selected over here on the image rail is this new image, the one of the snowy winter day. So if we came over here and gave it another change, we would be making that change to this image that we're seeing of the snowy winter day, 
not the original image. If we want to start back from the original, we just need to select that image by clicking on it. And now whatever change we ask for will be based on the original image, not the snowy image. It goes by whichever one you have selected. And whenever a new image is generated, the latest generation is selected by default, but you can switch it. So if we want to keep going with this, we might say something like put a red stocking cap on the dog. Now that's not exactly what I had in mind, but I probably don't want to make a change from this point because if you notice, here's our original image. There's a little bit of change in our dog when we went to the winter snowy scene and it changed even more when we tried to add the hat. So if I keep making changes from the changed image to the changed image to the changed image, we're going to get further and further away from what our original looked like. So if I wanted to change this hat, I'd probably come back to the snowy scene and say, put a stocking cap on the dog. That's a little more like what I had in mind. What I might also want to do at this point is come back to the original and try and get both changes based on the original. So I'd say, make it a snowy winter day, the dog is wearing a stocking cap. And that way I'm not going from the original image to the winter snowy scene to the cap. Hopefully I can get both things added from the original and have less change in my subject. Oh, this looks like it's referring to what we've done so far to some degree because it's got a combination of the hat from this image image and the hat from this image, both together in this image. So let's come up here next to the model name, click these three dots, clear out our history, select our original image, and try that again. Make it a snowy winter day, the dog is wearing a stocking hat. There we go, our dog's also wearing a neck warmer, but that's okay. Now, if I wanted to get away from this winter scene and do something completely different, I also would want to come back to the original. For instance, if we want the dog at the park on a summer day, probably wouldn't want to go from this image of the wintry scene. We'd want to switch back to this original, put the dog at the park on a summer day, and there he is. Now let's switch up and grab a new image. We'll go from history. We'll get this lady walking on the sidewalk and confirm. It's loaded up here in this big window on the right and in the image rail, it's the one that's selected. So that's the one that we're working with. Now I want to use a reference image. So I'm going to come down here on the bottom left and click this plus button. We can upload this from the computer, select it from our open art history or use one of our consistent characters. Right now I'm going to use history. Let's grab this doggo, confirm. I'm just going to say the woman is walking the dog, send the message, and there's the woman walking the dog. Now the woman doesn't look exactly like she did in our original image. It's changed her a bit. It's changed her clothing a bit and some of the background also. We can switch back to our original image. Let's change our model here to Gemini. Click the plus button and history. Grab our doggo again. Use our same message of the woman is walking the dog. And Gemini did a much better job, I think, of keeping the character consistent. You can tell when we just switch back from the original to the one with the dog, not much is changing in this image other than where her hand and arm is and adding the dog. Now let's switch back to this original. And this time I want to put one of my consistent characters here with this woman. So we'll click the plus button. I'm going to click character and let's use Robo, the robot character I created on open art. I'll just say Robo the robot is walking with the woman. I'm going to leave it on Gemini. We'll hit enter and wow, our robot is huge. It changed up the background quite a bit. Our character's fairly consistent, but there's some differences, but that robot is huge. Let's go back to our original image of the woman walking. We're going to add a character, select Robo again, and use the same prompt. Let's switch the model and see what GPT Medium does. GPT Medium made Robo a more reasonable size, but it also made some changes in our original subject there. Here again is the original, and then this is the GPT Medium with Robo added. Let's give this a shot with GPT High. We'll use the same instruction and the same character and hit go. It still took some liberties and made some changes that I wouldn't necessarily have asked for, but I think it's a little closer to our original character than what we got from GPT Medium. But hey, Robo looks pretty good. Now, if we want to clean things up here, we can come down on any of these images and click the little trash can. You can delete them from this image rail and it's not deleting them from your history. If you come over here on the bottom right and click on editing history, all the images we generated in chat to edit are all right there. Switch back over to chat. To start working with a new image, I can either click this new image button and upload, select my history or use a character. Or if I delete this little guy from the image rail, then I'll come back to this big blue screen that tells me to start with an image. And I can also clear out this chat history by clicking these three dots and then the clear button. Just gonna drag in an image of me. And let's check out the character lab. It's this big block right here. And if you don't see it, just click this character lab button and it'll pop up. 
There's eight options showing here. You've got Ghibli, you've got Human Eyes, which, you know, if you want to see what your cat would look like as a human being, Pixar, and a bunch more. But if we click this little arrow, now we've got a whole lot more styles to pick from, including the action figure in packaging, Simpsons, all kinds of strange stuff in here. You can even put yourself in a crystal ball or make a sticker pack. Let's go with this one where I'll be a chibi or chibi on a Polaroid. Just click apply. Now this is going to use GPT medium. And once you click apply, you'll see the prompt that it's using to generate the image. And there I am in 3D popping out of a Polaroid. I'm not quite stepping out like the prompt instructed, but you know, it's got my hand out, my head sort of sticking out of the picture. So that works. You can also look at this prompt and use it as a starter if you want to do something maybe similar, but a little bit different. You can just copy this and then paste it down in the prompt box and make whatever changes you want to make and send it. To give you a quick peek at the styles available in the character lab, I took this image of a woman sitting on the couch and applied each of the styles one at a time. I got most of them here, but there were a couple that didn't work. A few, like the avatar style, gave me an error that it violated the policies or content restrictions or something like that. So I guess however that preset prompt was written just didn't agree with ChatGPT. I didn't really fiddle with it, but if you really want one of those styles and it rejects the preset prompt, you can always look at that preset prompt and make some tweaks to it and describe the style in a different way that maybe it would accept. Now you might be thinking, okay, chat to edit is cool, but I can get that in ChatGPT or in Gemini, so why use OpenArt? Well, OpenArt gives you both in one place, Gemini and ChatGPT. It also gives you the three different flavors of the ChatGPT model, the basic, the medium, and the advanced. It's also really handy within the chat to edit on OpenArt to be able to grab any image you've created from your history in OpenArt and work with it right there. In addition to being able to grab any of your OpenArt images in the chat to edit, it's also easy to take those images you've edited by chat and continue to work with them right on the OpenArt platform. In the chat to edit area, OpenArt has put an upscale button and an image to video button right above the image you're working with. You can just click that upscale button and either just upscale the resolution 2x or go to the ultimate upscaler. And I love the options you have here. You can either do a precise upscale, which is going to add detail, but not really change anything. Refined upscale, which is going to keep everything pretty much the same, but lets you adjust the creativity level of how much you want to let it finesse, or the creative upscale that lets the AI take way more liberties with generating an awesome image from what you're starting with. To turn your masterpiece image into a video, click the image to video button right there at the top. OpenArt has a variety of models to choose from, Kling 1.6, Pixverse, VO2, even Kling 2.0, and several others. Type a prompt if you want, add sounds or speech, choose your settings, and click create. There's also a handy download button right here on this preview screen. You can choose between between JPEG and PNG. And if you want to use OpenArt's image editor to work on your image, just click this editing history button. When you hover over the image, you'll have a pencil in the bottom left, click that and it'll bring you into the full editor where you can do all kinds of things, in paint something, remove, expand the image, change the style, the background, edit the facial expression, fix hands, blend objects from several images into one and then fix up the lighting and the blending and a whole lot more. So you've got all these other tools you can use to work with your image right here on one platform under one subscription. You might have noticed in chat to edit, we also have this select area button. If we click that rascal, our mouse turns into a brush. And the idea is we can select an area in this image where we want to make a change. Like down here, maybe we want to mark this area. And then over in the message box, it says describe the content you want to add, delete, or replace in the selected area. I'll say a dog sleeping on the sidewalk. And there we have a dog sleeping on the sidewalk, notwithstanding the other changes it's made to the image that we didn't really ask for. Now, in my experience, that select area tool has been working best to remove things from the image that I don't want. As far as using the select area tool to indicate where I want to add or change things in the image, that's been hit or miss and honestly, mostly miss. When it comes to adding or changing things in the image, I'm having better luck just describing it in the message box, what I want and where I want it. But who knows, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just not tilting my head right when I try and do it. And in case you want to see how that video turned out, the one I just generated, well, this is it. Hey, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.